Anyway, uh, yeah, I was just we were saying before we hit record that it was basically Chad's fault because uh, I I told Chad yesterday, I said, I'm going to tweet that um, um, Kate Quigley got what she always wanted to be famous and kill. So uh, Chad, Chad laughed. So I was like, good enough for me. Here we go. Hello. <laughs> Plus, Ari Shafir taught me that uh, if it tracks comedically, it you 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 go with it. It doesn't matter about anything else. Like with Pang Dung, Pang Dang, however you want to call him, uh, he said Tony Hinchcliffe uh, it tracked comedically. So uh, then it, it's it's it it's a go. So I was like, she wanted to be famous. We all know she wanted to be famous. She don't date Hootie. You don't date a black dude unless you want to be famous. So she's dating a black dude. She's always like, hey, I'm a sexy little, hey, I, hey, look at me in my bikini. I do stand up in my bikini. She's a attention whore. And now she, so now she got everything. She always wanted to be a killer act. So now she got everything she always wanted in one night. But listen, I was just arguing with my wife about this. It's like, there's no way they don't know that there's fentanyl in it, right? Because why would you, uh, if you're a, a drug dealer, do you want to kill your customers? Um, well, that's the thing that they add to make it <clears throat> seem stronger and then it sells better. And so then it's like, sometimes it's like breaking, it, it's like breaking bad. It's that it, 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 people get addicted to it. They talk about it and then they buy it and they, they, too, they take too much. Well, weirdly when it comes, I know with heroin, I don't know about with cocaine, but I know with heroin, Dealers add it, and then if a junkie dies, it actually makes their product more popular because that means it's stronger. Mm. But I also think when you step on it with fentanyl or baking soda, it makes it look like there's more. Uh, like, well, yeah, uh, right. So it expands, so you could sell more, you know, at a higher price, and and it's not you're not really selling more. It just looks. Well, it's basically it's a shortcut to add potency to your yeah. to your product. So but I don't know. unfortunately, sometimes you die. By the way, we have Earl, our cocaine expert. So thanks for joining us. And well, I, I know I don't I know Adam was a heroin expert. <laughs> yeah. really I watched good. like every drug documentary. I'm obsessed with it. I mean, come on! I I every episode of Miami Vice a hundred times. <laughs> And I don't want to be smirched the almost dead, but uh, people are saying it was a gangbang. What are you hearing your L.A. sources? Well, I have been in a gangbang before. Uh, With heroin and, uh, and cocaine and fentanyl involved? No, the scary thing is this girl was sober. So uh, it was Carol Shelby's ex-wife, you know, the inventor of the uh, Cobra Mustang. So uh, after the gangbang, is probably 10 dudes and i was no like, now come on i i i'm you guys know me i don't lie uh i'm, I'm straight shooter earl uh and i felt sorry for this girl so i said hey i'll give you a ride home uh <laughs> and uh wait you yeah. gave a girl a ride home from a gangbang so we get into my car you look like a real cock hey i'll give you a ride maybe i'll maybe she'll give me a blowjob on the way home trust me she was an animal like uh so she gets in the car, she puts on a jacket that says Shelby Motors. I'm like, oh my God, you know Carol Shelby, the Ford Cobra? She's like, no, that's my husband. But what the fuck? Get out of here, man, you bitch. <laughs> that's all true? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, she like she had a sexual... And how do you get 10 guys together to have a gangbang? Well, unfortunately, I was the 10th guy called, so I'm not sure how the first nine got there, but... Uh, oh, my God. We were on a text thread. <laughs> well, when I basically, and when I got there, they were out of condoms. So <laughs> the guys whose condo it was, I'll just call him Hot Tub Johnny, who's since committed suicide. Uh, he lived on Doheny for all you local yokels in LA. And uh, he's like, just go in the kitchen and find something. So I was like, what am I, MacGyver? Uh, so, <laughs> Wait, you had to make a condom? Yeah, so I, I'm frantically looking because this is like 20 years ago. So my testosterone counts through the roof. And uh, think of Tom Platts in the 80s. That's a bodybuilding reference. And uh, so I see this unopened Ritz cracker bag, and I'm like, "Well, my dick's big enough to fill it." And uh, oh my god! 
So I very carefully, you know how rich cracker bags are, you know, you got to be real careful when you open them up and I pour yeah. all the crackers out. Yeah. I put them on my pee pee and I, I do my thing. And then when I pulled out, I took the bag off and squirted. This guy was an agent all over the, uh, there was like six scripts for under siege too. So, uh, every time I see that movie, I have flashbacks and then, uh, I gave how her much, right of, how much of this is true. 100% on my parents' graves. Wow. Even the squirting the jizz on the scripts? Yeah, because they were all passed out. I mean, when I walked into the room, uh, basically, I guess, this living room, there was like nine people spread out like in Saving Private Ryan. I mean, there were just bodies everywhere. Wait, so the woman's <laughs> still alive that did the gangbang? I believe so. She was great. And so... <laughs> and she was married at the time? According to her, I was like, because I'm a big car buff, you know, and, and you know, the, the Ford Cobra Mustang is like, that's like one of the top 10 muscle cars of all time. And, and so she has Shelby Motors on. I'm like, oh my God, Carol Shelby, that's, uh, that's amazing. You know, him? that's my husband, hon. I'm like, oh, geez. And you dropped her off at her house? I dropped, no, no, I dropped her off. Just so you know, I'm not bullshitting on Beverly Glen and, uh, Wilshire, there's the Sterling Hotel owned by the owner of the Clippers. This house, horny she was. So we're in the lobby and she, do you want to come up? Come up? You're just fucked 10 dudes. Like, you want me to come up? And I'm out of Ritz crackers. Yeah, hello. Uh, so then the next day, when I was working <laughs> at the gym, I you had to use a Pringles can. can. Uh, tell me if that would have worked uh, <laughs> yeah didn't the ritz cracker bag scratch your snatch right. a little bit well when i pulled out the the cracker bag my dick looked like one of those ice cream cones you know with the ch sprinkles on top you know those uh <laughs> yeah, yeah cracker yeah. residue snow cones or whatever yeah uh, and then i told my two buddies at the gym they're like we gotta meet this girl uh, i'm like well she's at the sterling plaza hotel and the one guy's like, I'll tell her I play for the Raiders. I'm like, you don't have to. You can just go over there. <laughs> the little black guy named Albert, he's like, I'll, I'll tell her I just produced Prince's new album. I'm like, you don't really have to. You just go over there. So they go over there. I, I call her up and say, hey, I, I got some dudes. They're cool. You Wait, know, this is the same day? This is the same day? No, this is the next day. This is the next day. So she got, she got so a little call, sleep. Yeah, she had to go sleeping. And so they call me two days later. I'm like, hey, how was it? She's wild, right? They're like, how was it? We're still here. Like, she was <laughs> just unbelievable. Now, there's a third part of the story, but I think you guys get the part. Did somebody get murdered? No, no. So then my other buddy, who's like a big agent today, he's like, well, I got to get over there. I'll, I'll take her to play pool. I'm like, you don't have to. You can just go <laughs> over there. So I'll he goes over to, there. I'll take her to the IHOP. She don't, <laughs> you don't have to get her any pancakes. Yeah. So she, he goes over there, takes her to dinner and to play pool. The next day she calls me and I'm like, hey, how was, how was Rick? Great, right? Big dick. She's like, I didn't sleep with him. I'm like, you didn't sleep with one person? And she goes, Earl, I'm not fucking anyone who can't beat me in pool. So, and then that's, <laughs> so it backfired. I thought yeah, she I mean, was just going to fuck him. She wouldn't fuck him because he treated her like a lady. Uh, well, that, that, you know, this happened to me a few times, you know, when I take these wayward open micers out to dinner and they're like, oh, usually people fuck me after I feature in the belly room. <laughs> Enough about Kate quickly. Listen. Hello. I'm friends with Kate in full disclosure, but like, you know, uh, you know, it's horrible what happens, you know. Yeah, everybody's friends with her seemingly, but I mean, uh, whatever. Anyway, I was I was thinking like the couple of weeks ago, whatever whatever episode that was when I when she was talking about she needed an OnlyFans to get health insurance. I hope she got health insurance between now and then because otherwise, she, she her credit score is going to be hurting. Well, I don't think fentanyl is covered under uh, most. Uh, yeah, that's health. that's another. Even if she has health insurance and it gets out that she uh, was doing drugs, I don't even know if they'll cover. The point is that uh, uh, when you go to ICU, it gets pretty pricey in the ICU. It's not like staying at the fucking Sterling Hotel for a couple of nights. <laughs> it gets real expensive in intensive care. Oh, just the hospital or the ambulance ride is $2,500 just to get you there. 
Might even be more by now. I bet it's at least 50 grand a night at an ICU if you don't have insurance. Uh, so, and I, I'll assume, I mean, it happened in Venice. So she either went to St. John's, which is where I was born, or uh, Cedar. Oh, you really name dropping. She, yeah. They didn't take her to Cedar. I mean, they don't take her if you're almost dead. They don't take you to Cedars. That's too far, right? Isn't there a hospital down there, uh, down well, near uh, Marina Del Rey or someplace like that? Well, St. John's is the closest, unless there's a small. Oh, that's one. Santa Monica, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I used uh, to go there when I lived there. You know, uh, Jenna Jameson, the porn star, had twins uh, out of St. John's, but they landed in Cedars, so that birth canal. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew a, I knew a zinger was coming. That, that's a skakel classic there. <laughs> Boy, those kids must have felt like they were on a water park ride. Ma, 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 ma. Right, so, I, you guys, I, so uh, Barry Ribs said that, uh, what did he say about me? Yeah, what did Barry Ribs say about you? He was taking shots. I mean, I was going to call him a comedy hobo, but I didn't feel like punching down. I mean, I mean, Barry Ribs is like, what? First of all, it tracks. It Comedically, it tracks. I don't know why everyone's. Man, bring it up with a uh, uh, Ari. Don't don't bring it up with me. You see what Jessica Kirsten said? The consensus on the this is Barry Ribs talking about my cake Quigley tweet. The consensus on this, you bombed. God is the executive producer. So I'm like, come on, Barry, grow up. First of all, I, you guys can't hurt me. First of all, a comedy hobo. Call this episode comedy hobo. The comedy hobo which is bare ribs. I mean, he's lucky to be alive after the flooding in Elizabeth, New Jersey in its basement apartment. Look, look, Google basement apartments, New York City. Everybody who died in the flood last week would lived in a basement apartment practically, unless you got swept away when you're in your car, et cetera. Nobody who lived on the second or third floor died. It was all basement. So Barry ribs is, is here by the grace of God and myself. So, uh, but I, I was I the only one who tweeted something uh, about, Okay, quickly, the only person in the comedy community. Is that, I mean, who, fucking, think, is, is that who Jessica Kirsten was talking about? I think so. <laughs> why didn't she just say, why didn't she tag me? Why didn't she talk to me directly? Like I, like, I give a fuck. First of all, I think I could take her in a fight. And second of all, I don't give a fuck about your stupid comedy community. What, what the union? Like the Steelworkers Union? Fuck y'all. You people provide no fucking benefits for me. Oh, what were they gonna, I'm not going to get a spot at the stand again? <laughs> what? Let me put a call into Milligan. <laughs> Are you, that's what you. That's how you referred to him? Last yeah. name? Yeah, yeah. PM. And I guess, I guess Rebecca from the Creek in a Cave, she was talking shit about me. No one talks shit to my face or even tags me. So it's like, I, I don't even know her. I've never worked there. I never plan on working at her fucking stupid club. Like, well, you got the you got the fifth rated highest rated club in Austin, Texas. Like, who gives a fuck? Isn't she like a comedy Karen? Like, didn't she cancel like Kumia and the fuck because they had and the she the skanks had to move because uh because they had Milo on. She's like, I don't approve. And I think she went after that one black comic in Vegas, uh, Diaz Mackey, who allegedly uh, assaulted her friend. And uh, that's the only one I heard about. I don't know what you're Black talking comic about. Black comic in Vegas. Oh, no, I'm just saying. I'm, you know, Kevin, I got my ear to the ground. I'm like the Matt Drudge of L.A. comedy. I follow the sting. <laughs> I Jessica's, got sources everywhere. Jessica says, any comic who's making fun of Kate's condition should be roasted like a pig on a spit in front of the whole comedy community. Shame on you. So who, I think that, who? Shame well, on who? Think, Shame on me, shame on me, then, then tag me. Then fucking tag me. Don't say roasted, Jeff Ross will want to get involved. I'm trying to get this fucking, this Bob Levy gig I'm doing this Saturday, 9-11. I don't know, it's in New Jersey, so I'll tweet it out. No, but I mean, if Jessica Kirsten has a problem with me and it's like, first of all, first of all, I have no sympathy for people who do drugs. It's like, she wasn't hit by a car after a gig or anything like that, she, it was self-inflicted. So I'm supposed to be like, hey, you got to respect the fucking almost dead. 
It's what? ridiculous. Like, like if, like if Artie Lang, when, when, and if Artie Lang dies of a, of a drug situation, people are gonna be like, "Oh God damn it!" Don't blame the drugs. Blame the fucking person. Did I do any cocaine this weekend laced with fentanyl? No, because I think it's bad. I think it's. I think it might have the bad outcome. So don't blame. Don't blame the drugs or blame the person. You fucking hacks, Brian Redband. Hug your kids. Yeah, if you're about to do coke, yeah, say your goodbyes. If you're about to do coke laced with fentanyl, bye, kids. I'm gonna go do some coke laced with fentanyl. So yeah, I might not be back with some black dudes. So I might get robbed and then die. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Yeah, blame the drugs. Not not the people doing the drugs. Did it work out for Sam Kennison? No. Greg Geraldo? No. Richard Pryor? No. But everybody keeps doing drugs. So yeah, but blame the drugs. Blame the drug dealer. Don't blame, don't blame the drug user, because they're they're heroes. They're addicts. Yeah, addicts are heroes. Addicts, ad addicts are losers. They're weak. Jessica. Well, you're like Rambo in the hardware store right now. <laughs> I didn't see that movie, but I, I hope you're right. You didn't see the first Rambo? No, I was busy. I was podcasting. Okay. In 81, you were podcasting? Yeah, I was before Mark Marin. I'm an addict too. <laughs> Mark Marin, no. Thirty years sober. Too bad, Mark. Too bad. It'd be great if you had an early demise. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he should have been at that party too, in Venice. <sighs> he don't go that. He don't go that far south. <laughs> Yeah, you got to be careful in Venice. Some it's a, it's a wacky neighborhood where one block is two million dollar condos, the next block the Shoreline Crips are hanging out. Very dangerous neighborhood. What's funny? Well, it's not funny. I know a lot of people live there. Neil lives there. Uh, uh, Norm McDonald lives there. I mean, I know where they live. I c I could do a tour of Venice uh, just that alone. Well, now it's Ten City. Like there's literally like yeah, yeah, of course. Crisis. Um, Kate Quigley was saying she was just on Joey Diaz podcast on Wednesday and today out of curiosity, I wanted to listen because somebody sent me a clip. The first 10 minutes they were talking about the dangers of cocaine and, and Joey's like, yeah, they're putting everything in cocaine. It was kind of weird. And then she says, yeah, I live in Venice. She goes, I live a couple houses down from Hunter Biden. So Hunter Biden lives in Venice and she goes, I feel it's great because they have secret service on the street all the time. So she's like, I feel safe because he lives here. But she, she wasn't safe from herself. That's what I'm trying to say. You can be a safe, snug and a bug and a rug. But if you're going to do cocaine, lace with fentanyl, you're your own worst animus. Well, she said uh, she texted Brian and she says she's OK. So, you know. yeah, we all know that, Chad. What else is it? Is it going to be sunny tomorrow? Like everybody knows that everybody saw that. No, but he was like, it, it's like, it, they, I they love how people make heroes out of these fucking losers that do drugs. I mean, Earl, I have more respect for the 10 guys that did the fucking gangbang with Earl Skakel. <laughs> All managers and agents, man. <laughs> I bet. A, I bet. It's the last gig they fucking booked me on. Fucking was, da <laughs> was Dante there? No, this was high end. I see him. William Morris. One guy's a huge. I I, I I don't want to even give any hints as to who he is, but like he's big in the business, and like you know, he won't help me out because he. I think he thinks to me as oh, that's the guy who went on last in a gangbang twenty years ago. Oh Dave right. Becky. Well, hello. <laughs> he didn't say no. I should have sold some Brody T-shirts at this gangbang. I could have made a mint. Push. In oh, believe oh, you got oh. it. There was plenty of pushing that night. <laughs> oh, so so nasty. oh, you went to Brody's memorial, didn't you? I did. I was there. Uh, I was out of control. Seven speakers, two plugged their podcasts. Uh, <laughs> it was like, Wasn't it Jeff was Ross there? Jeff Ross was there. Uh, you know, it was awkward, but like, 
we don't talk. So, you know, I, I'm okay with that. Didn't you say like you see Jeff Ross and he walks the other way? Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm, I, someone said I take up a lot of real estate in his head. So uh, I've had a few of also, his. You, plus also you would beat the living shit out of him. You, you would leave him a fucking bloody mess of a nothing. Yeah, I, I, that's one guy I think I, I could do some damage to with this great body of mine. My body's in even better shape than I was the last time I took off my shirt. All right, don't shirt. do it too soon. Don't shoot your load yeah. properly. Look yeah. These, it, look at this. They say black is trimming, but look at these fucking deltoids about to pop out of my Sting shirt. 52 that, years old, I'm wearing a pro wrestling shirt. Yeah, because if you take your shirt off now, that's like uh, the steel cage match and CM Punk going on afterwards. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you know, you gotta uh, pace yourself on this podcast. I've learned that. <laughs> also, uh, before we forget, we gotta plug this football. Thing yeah, to I'm excited about this. Okay, so I already have money from like eight people, so it's gonna be bigger than I thought. Anyway, two fifty to buy in. Uh, email me. Um, and what I tell him to do last time. Yeah, if you email Kevin Brennan comedy at Gmail, uh, you can set up payment. No, plan. it's not it. Let me just oh. do it. Kevin Brennan comedian at Gmail, or just go to my website and hit contact. Uh, tell me you want to sign in. I'll, uh, and then we'll, and then I have your email. Also, uh, I have PayPal. And if you want to do PayPal, my PayPal is easy, but I'll just give you whatever link you, everyone's using PayPal so far, but I also have Venmo. And uh, so, uh, contact me that you want to do it and it's 250 to buy in which is like a little more than it's about 15 bucks a week which is pretty cheap but you we, already you're going to if you come in first place you're going to win like probably 2500 dollars. so it's pretty good and right then, now uh, and florentine's jumping in with luke they're going to be involved yeah and we only plugged it on on miser Lowe's football on the patreon so that's only 100 people so we have more obviously it's going to get big there. the pot's big so uh the deal is uh Chad's getting out, giving out some misinformation. What we're going to do is uh, Thursday, we do the show on Thursday. So whatever the line is on Thursday, when we're doing the show, that's the line. And then, oh, so, right, oh, okay. and, and then right after we do the show, we'll, we'll tweet out the line. And then, so that way, if there's any, there, that way there's no mis, miscommunication on that misinformation on that and then um and then you got to get your sh you get you got to get it in by thursday that you know eight o'clock eastern whatever time the game starts eight thirty, and then if you you know and if you don't then obviously you can't you lose that game so uh you know with, there's been different things about like if you don't get it in by thursday then you have an advantage uh if you wait past thursday because the line might change and but the line doesn't change that much because last year they had people drop off because COVID and the line goes maybe one or two points. If, if probably if it shifts more from two points or three points from the line we have on Thursday, then maybe we'll disqualify the game. Maybe we'll have some kind of rule, but we'll just play it by ear. But we're only talking about one point, one game, one point. So, but get it in by Thursday, 830 Eastern, your picks, send them to my email. Kevin Brennan comedian at Gmail. And then, uh, and then we'll like, well, you know, I guess every time we do the show, we'll announce who's who, what, what, what. the leaders board. Yeah. 50%. Yeah, the, maybe the top five. We're not, I can't give everybody's thing, but first yeah, place 50%, is 50% to first place, 30% to second place, 20% to third place. And, and, I, and fourth place, you get a phone call from Ken Mosca. Yeah. And also people, and when you send me PayPal, don't send it to me as like a lot so far, I think two or three people, have paid a fee. So don't pay a fee on PayPal. Just send it. It's like you're not buying something. So just send it to me, friends and family or whatever, because, uh, you know, I'll pay, you know, I, it's like $7 off two fifty, So it's not a lot, but it's like, it's still dumb. So I've been paying Adam for like many years on PayPal. Never once have I paid a fee. I, I don't, I don't pay fees. So there's a way to not pay fees. So I don't know why you're paying a fee. So don't pay a fee. Cause then I'll, it'll come out of my end. But anyway, it's, it's, been more successful than i thought like people actually giving me money if i if i was chad i would have probably already disappeared if you know what i'm saying like there's enough money there that i'd be i'd be probably shacking up at the sterling hotel and and having a couple of gang bangs so you know i mean I, I i don't know what it is i but i think six people have already given me money that doesn't include 
Chad, that doesn't include Ken Mosca, that doesn't include me, doesn't include uh, 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 Florentine. Say, Florentine and his son. So we're already at like, we're already at like probably 2,500 bucks. So, and then more people sign up after this. So, I mean, it might get to a point where I have to cut it off, I think, because, it, it, you know, if I get like, 20, 30 people. I mean, can I even keep track of that many fucking things? It'll be like a full-time job. I'll do it. But I, at some point I might, so, so we definitely need to get to 20. So get in early. So you get one of the first 20 people. If we get to 20, first prize is 2,500. So that's oh. sweet. That's good, right? Yeah. All right. Thanks for jumping in everybody. Yeah. That's, I mean, 2,500 bucks for a, a friendly fucking thing. Wouldn't that be sweet? I think it'd be sweet. I mean, I, I'm not sound like a Lenny, but it sounds that's 2,500 bucks sounds like a little bit of money. Yeah, Earl, what especially, would you do with $2,500? Especially right after the holidays when you after the Super Bowl or after whatever, and you get the, you got to pay off your Christmas uh, credit cards. I mean, what would I do with $2,500? I'd try and find a gangbang girl and run a business. <laughs> Is that, that's your only gangbang? I mean, how come it didn't happen again? Well, I mean... Uh, that was like the big one. That was like the Super Bowl of gangbangs. Uh, <laughs> I've had some uh, other, uh, you know, three, four and ones, you know, tag teams, guys in the closet, you know, filling, you know, like tag team matches. It's coming in, coming out. Like this is the late eighties. It was, it was a wild time back then. Like, it's like, a, it's like an Eagle song. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like fucking hotel California, your whole fucking upbringing gang bangs and shit and it was wild i mean but, but that's why uh, when i'm at uh, comedy clubs out here in la and people talk about having a wild scene i'm like that's nothing man like i was in a room with 10 pointed objects that looked like a missile silo at one point in this room it was just boner well you guys were all st at one point you're all there together yeah so how do you do a gang bang you 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 all you 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 do it and then you take a break and then somebody else and then you go back or you just you start and then you finish. You draw numbers. Kind of both. Yeah, there was a deli ticket number taker at the door. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know. That's how you know she's a bit of a hoe if she's got a deli fucking ticket thing. Now serving fourteen. <laughs> uh, so wait, so 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 you do it a little bit and then you let it uh, let other guy jump in. You know, you watch TV. I mean, usually uh, Hot Tub Johnny at a night. I mean, in, it was just probably. Uh, oh, so she five. was in. She was in like the the bedroom, and then you guys were like in the waiting room watching TV. No, no, this was it. Well, this particular one was in the living room, and then uh, I think uh, Johnny's bedroom was off limits because that's where he slept with his girlfriend. What the fuck? <laughs> Get out of town! <laughs> and then uh, I just. I don't know. There wasn't a lot of room in the front room, so I took I took her into the side office where there were all those under siege two scripts on the desk. And, you know, uh, I took the only it's one. Still, it sounds made up when you, it sounds like that <laughs> Nicholas Cage fucking. Uh, no, I'm telling you, I, on my like, it, I'm telling you, it happened. Like, this. are you high fiving anybody? No, I wanted to get out of there just because, uh, you know the there was a lot this room was well lit that i was in so when i looked down there it looked like i was looking into that thing boba fett fell into i mean it was just <laughs> nastiness <laughs> you guys were drunk or she was drunk no i was sober Wait, can she I... sue can she sue you for saying this or no or statue of limitations you never said it never said her name right uh yeah you did have. uh I don't know. It was uh, all consensual. Like, it wasn't like it was like. No, I'm not saying about that. It's not rape. I'm saying, could she say, sue you for saying she was in a gangbang? But if her husband's a fan of the podcast. Yeah, he's on Patreon. <laughs> well, he's been dead for 10 years. So oh, good. We're, oh, we're good. I don't think he's a long time listener. Does she have kids? Uh, who knows? I haven't seen her since. She probably uh, has a couple from that night, if you know what I'm saying, right? Oh, my God. There was that room smelled like a chlorine factory at one point. Um, oh, it's disgusting. So gross. I mean, I. I don't think I could do that. I don't think I'd be in a room with ten or twelve other dudes, especially well, with your more, out. It was more just for the laughs, and the, you know, it was just. Were, like, you, what, were you guys laughing? Yeah, it was just like, because 
when I first walked in. Well, who called you? Who called you over? Uh, I'll just say uh, I'll change his name to uh, Pork Chop Harry. Uh, he called me up late night and they get over to Hot Tub Johnny's house. So I, I get over. But who's Hot Tub Johnny? He's in he's in show business. Yeah, he was he was in show business and he killed himself a couple of years ago. Uh, Rest in peace. For, for what? Yeah. Uh, who knows? Just the business. This is. Uh, I, th I think he was business. about. To I don't know. I can't I'm believe I've survived this long without killing myself. The business yeah. is so brutal. It really is. Now, now I'm getting bullied by other comics like Jessica Curson. I mean, yeah, I mean, I. Uh, I and saw Barry Ribs, Barry Hobo Ribs. I mean, I saw the tweet. I thought. I mean, you know, it's it's what happens when there's a tragedy. Like people like make fun of like. Plus, I don't like her. Well, there's that. I think, I think people are missing the fact that, like, I already had a thing with her. This wasn't out of left field. She was she was trolling me a couple of weeks ago. Who's Kevin Brennan? Do I know him? You do now, bitch. <laughs> when you wake up, I hope she's like, uh, <laughs> Kevin Brennan? Kevin Brennan? <laughs> Now, I hope the first thing Tommy says, you hear Kevin Brennan's tweet about you? <laughs> I hope that's what the fucking ICU nurse, ICU nurse says. What, what's your relationship with Kevin Brennan? <laughs> first, of all, first of all, don't... Listen, I, can, I don't want to come off as racist, but do you know these comics that died? Bert. Uh, Bert. Um, Bert. Yeah, Machine. I, I knew Foo. He was a good dude, man. Very Foo? Cool. Foo? Who is the guy that is? Yeah. Uh, I didn't know the other guy, the, the white Who's dude. Who's Foo? Who's Foo? He's the black guy. I did a show with him at the Haha ha Cafe like a year ago. What's a his, year or two ago. I thought his name was Antoine or something. Well, yeah, but everyone calls him Foo. Uh, what's, his name? Just, what's his real name? I think his middle name is Fuquan. Like, no, that's his first name, Fuquan Johnson. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I've always called him Foo. Great All right. Guy. So. And cool. But the other two guys are both comics, right? All three were comics, right? Well, I think the other guy, uh, he was a comic who I didn't know, and then that the fourth person was Foo's girlfriend. Oh, it was a oh his girlfriend died. So I'm not uh, sure what she did. I, I I don't think I've ever met her, but like Foo, you would have loved Foo, like just like very mellow, casual dude. I know? don't like people like that. You talking to me? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, he <laughs> didn't do roast battles, so that proved he had common sense. Uh, you know, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a bummer, but you know, well, that's gonna I, be that, that's gonna be mentally messed up on Kate, like the fact that she survived and those three people died. That's gonna be a tough road to yeah, to come back yeah. from. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's. Uh, I, I just think of what the cops first saw when they walked in there three dead bodies, one person barely hanging on. I mean, it's. Uh, oh, the FBI is going to be involved. This is a this is going to be a whole mess. Well, there have already been 10 people who died in L.A. this, this weekend from uh, fentanyl uh, laced cocaine. So that's when they get involved. It's like mm -hmm. when the uh, Mac Miller thing happened. Yeah. You know, it's very similar to uh, it's going around now in L.A. So like who bought the cocaine? Where they get it from? It. Who's holding it? Whose house they were at? There's all kinds of things. I have questions. Well, that's the thing, though, is when you buy cocaine, like if anyone in this podcast bought cocaine, by the time it gets to us, it's been stepped on at least four times, if not more. So you don't know what you're getting like. You, you could be getting anything. Uh, was she vaccinated? That's uh, what's important. What am I no, because about? I like these people that won't get <laughs> vaccinated because it's not tested, but they trust this fucking cocaine that they bought on Venice Beach somewhere. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know. That's what I'm saying. I have no, I have no, I have no like sympathy or anything for these people. It's like, don't, you know, I know it's cool to do drugs, but is it Not cool really. now? Is it cool now? Is it now that three people are dead and one's almost dead? Like, that's cool? That's cool. I guess it is. But it's like, it's just it's just this whole thing of like, I, I you know, I don't trust the vaccines, but I do trust heroin and rando cocaine that's, 
that's been stepped on, as you like to say, stepped on at least four times. You need to join well, the mean, D.A.R.E. program. You figure it starts in Colombia. It gets shipped. No, I don't care. I, yeah, of course. But I'm saying, like, you don't even know. You don't even know what the fuck's in it. But you're ingested into your fucking, into your nose or wherever. I don't even know how you take it anymore. I know Brian what? McCarthy used to <laughs> used to do it up his nose. Yeah, we should have Brian on as the, the yeah. cocaine expert. We, we missed out on that one. Cocaine correspondent. Well, Stevie <laughs> Nicks had it blown up her ass. That's true. Was she at the party? <laughs> uh, no, I think she was at uh, Lindsey Buckingham's house, having him blow it, blow it up her booty hole. Does it does it get there faster? Yeah, it gets. Well, uh, from what I understand, it uh, you know there's a lot of uh, nerve endings and, and blood vessels in your mud hut. So if you uh, <laughs> if if you like, do I know my up. I know my wife has a lot. You know, call, <laughs> you know what we used to call it? We used to call it the Gold Dust Woman. That's how we did it. Mm. Well, well, Stevie Nicks better. put in. Stevie Nicks was loosening her nose, right? That's why she had to stop doing it up her nose. Well, she uh, blew out her nasal uh, cavity, and then uh, you could still, you know, like um, lick it, uh, you know, and, and swallow it, and you get a good buzz. But uh, she didn't want to fuck up her vocal cords, so they actually hired a full time guy to to blow it up her ass, and that must have been a great job interview. Oh, I would, yeah, like like. What's the first question on the resume? Like, hi, uh, do you mind the smell of Lindsey Buckingham? <laughs> and Mick Fleetwood. And uh, 25 other bass and, players. And Don Henley. Plus, you know, he only told, he just toured, he, he tell, would tell people he, he tours with Fleetwood Mac. That was his job. Yeah. He didn't tell him that what he was actually doing. He's like, no, I'm touring with the band, you know. What are you like yeah. a guitar tech, a roadie? No, I blow. Yeah, cocaine yeah, I'm back. Ass. I do a lot of backstage stuff. You know, I'm basically <laughs> backstage. The offstage keyboard player. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't have keyboards and play with the back you wear. Let's, let's just say I get Stevie going, if you know what I mean. No, I'm just saying. Listen, kids, if you want to do drugs, do drugs. But you know, they're not tested. They're not. They're not safe. Just say no. You don't know. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm not saying say no. I'm saying like you got to be like. You got to be like aware that you don't know what the fuck's in it. So you can take it, but you don't know what's in it. You don't know where it's as, as Earl to, likes to uh, say, been stepped on. Well, I mean, you figure if it starts in Colombia, it goes to say Florida, it's stepped on there. And then it's hey. to, say Texas. Well, you know, it's just, I'm just don't well, give a fuck. <laughs> then it goes to Texas to get its way to LA. It's stepped on in Texas. Then it gets to LA it's stepped on at least once or twice. So it's like, you know, by the time it gets to Venice on a Saturday, hey, you don't know what's in like, it. You don't know what's in it is my point. So it's like, just, yeah. you know, I mean, It'd it's like, I've seen, perfect. I've seen way too many comics be like, or way too many people in general being like, Oh, I don't know. This this vaccine hasn't been tested. It's like, yeah, but, but yeah, you're right. It hasn't been tested. Uh, like no, things normally happen. Like you do drugs. Do you do drugs? If you do shut the fuck up. Cause drugs are, Drugs, nobody tests drugs, uh, street drugs anywhere. I mean, now, now I guess to do with marijuana, but people don't die from marijuana. Hey, so, uh, so that's a, that's a moot point. So uh, cocaine, heroin, ask Artie, ask Artie Lang the last time he did heroin that had been tested. He looks great, by the way. <laughs> you know, the sad part about Artie, Artie used to be good looking. Like if you see old headshots of him and when he was on Stern, like from the early days on YouTube, like, Artie was a good-looking guy. Well, I don't know about that, but like no, he wasn't like he looked like you know he just he, he would look like the guy. He looked like Artie Lang, like a, just a young Artie Lang, reasonably handsome guy. I'm not saying he's gorgeous, not Tom Cruise. I mean, he, uh, he was no Marcus Schenkenberg. <laughs> it's a deep cut. He was a male model from the late '80s. Oh, I thought he was at the gangbang. Uh, he might have been at some one point. <laughs> Well, when I walked into the gangbang, I could tell the girl was a little tired. She definitely needed a halftime. And she looks up at me and goes, who the hell are you? And I'm like, it just before I can even spit out who I was, my buddy's like, oh, that guy's in Guns N' Roses. He's got more money than all of us. And so. <laughs> She's like, all right, let's get to work. Yeah. And at that point, was, yeah. She's like, she can't really fact check anybody. That was before Google, right? Yeah, there was no Wikipedia pages in this room. And then uh, the one guy kind of insulted her. He looks at her and goes, honey, you're the type of girl I want to bring home to my mom. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Earl, what, 
What episode was uh, Smuggler's Blues on Miami Vice, and where was Glenn Fry getting the cocaine? Uh, he got it from. Uh, they would fly to Puerto Rico, and the and, the, and they'd land on an abandoned airfield and uh, ship it out. All right. That's how it goes, though. You don't know. Uh, you don't even know when you pick it up in, uh, say, Colombia or wherever, what they've done to it for, uh, you know, uh, the first uh, what they call the milk run uh, season. Yeah, but you can months. you can test it if you have the technology, right? Oh yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying, like, you don't even know, like, when it first gets shipped over to Florida or Texas or LA, what they've done to it already. Like, they could have stepped on no, it. No, I, I obviously, but I'm saying, if if you buy it and you have the technology, you can test it at your house, right, to see how pure it is and what's what's in it. Or yes, yes yeah, or no. There's something you can. Uh, it's like a dropper. You can, and if it turns a certain color, I think it's blue. It's like 90 percent or higher pure, and then if it like is yellow it's 70 percent yeah but if it's 70 percent well you know what the other 30 percent is no i mean could there be. you go so then you you don't even know what the fight could be rat poison yeah oh i thought you meant rat the 80s band they had a nice run hey i got some breaking news just came out uh new york post is uh reporting you want it yeah oh you no do. no i don't want it Wait, yeah, you gotta, we want it. You got to do the Gary Mule there typewriter sound. Dee, 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 dee. I'll let you do that, Michael Winslow. Dee, 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 dee. The Wire actor Michael K. Williams found dead in New York City apartment. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah. You remember Wait, season one that... of The Wire? Marlo Stanfield, man. Is he a well-known actor? Yeah. yeah. Kid, oh shit! Yeah. That's o That's Omar. Omar from uh, The Wire. No, found dead. Omar died. Yeah, age fifty-four. Possible, what? possible overdose. Which is for, which is for a, a guy named Williams. What's his name? William K. Williams. Michael well, K. Williams. I was gonna say that's natural causes for a black actor. <laughs> He was the dude with the scar on his cheek. He was in The Wire. So yeah. how would he not get addicted to drugs? Maybe he was a method actor. <laughs> the problem is The Wire was canceled 20 years ago. My, 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 yeah, my. but you don't give up cocaine like that. You do it for life. Yeah. Comedian Kate Quigley found at the scene. Just kidding. Too soon. Too soon. She likes drugs and black dude, so... The best part was how how thick how quickly Hootie was like. Yeah, I don't. It's been many 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 moons since I was friends. Yeah, with Hootie. Him. He wanted no part of this. He's just like, all right, dude. They, they were tagging him in recklessly. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and even it was a uh, Labor Day weekend. His his camp was like, nope, nope, nothing to do with her. Nope. She was a she was a party girl. He had a couple of nights with her at the Sterling Hotel. And then it was on to, to touring with country bands. I'm telling you, they're still cleaning the sheets in room 206. Oh, so nasty. <laughs> From you? No, no. I was I was actually nice to her and like treated her nice and like Yeah, but how'd you get stuck driving uh, her home? I felt so bad for her, you know, like you had to be there, man. Like and she didn't have a car? No, I think they met her at the Four Seasons. A hot tub Johnny lived right down the street from the Four Seasons. The one in Beverly Hills? Yeah, it's on it's on a street called Doheny. Well, here's I one see. other part. Did you put a towel? Did you put a towel on the seat in your car? Because she was, she was. I would have. She was oo me. oozing a lot of goo. Well, here's the funniest part was so they call me over there now. Uh, Doheny after nine p.m. at night is permanent parking only, so I couldn't find parking. So I left my car. Explain that to people. Explain that to people. So, uh, you know, Four Seasons, Doheny. No, permit. I'm talking about permit parking. You, no, I'm it, saying it's, it's you can't park on the street unless you show that you live there. That's how bad parking is in Los Angeles. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Beverly Hills. So they don't want riffraff, you know, parking their cars there and going elsewhere. So uh, one time, one time I parked at the one time I parked. I, I was in L.A. I was a long time ago. I was staying at my cousin's house. I borrowed their car to park near the uh, Melrose Improv. So I didn't know about the fucking permit parking. I I someone I got a ticket, and then somebody stole my ticket, and off my car and put it on their car. So then the cops gave me two tickets. Well, I was doing like a, a fifteen minute spot. I got two tickets, and my I used in my cousin's car, and they were like, "How did you get two tickets, you fucking loser?" And I was like, "I 
what? Isn't that all meter parking on Melrose? It, no, I'm saying the side streets. I wasn't on Melrose. I, there was no parking. Uh -oh. there, so I had to park on the side streets. But it was all it's all residential there. And I got two tickets while I was at the Melrose Improv in 1991. And you got $15 for your spot. Yeah, I was taping evening at the Improv. So I, I barely made a profit. Go ahead. That's a good story. Sorry to cut you off, Earl. Oh no no! I so I, I so there was no parking. I was so I was in such a hurry to get up to this fucking party that I left my car in the middle of Doheny, and I I just literally left my car running. Like I, I didn't even take my keys <laughs> out. So when, I, you know that's not true. I swear on, on. Why would you not take your keys out? I was so horny and ready to party that I literally just. I, I got so frustrated without finding parking that I just left my car in the middle of Doheny. <laughs> lights did you, on, running. Did you put the hazards on at least? No, it was just like. <laughs> Doheny's a very busy street, dude. Oh my God. Well, not at like, this was at, uh, I want to, now this is a while ago. I'll guess this was around 1 a.m. Uh, oh, so, all right. And, you know, it's funny, there was a, a Ralph supermarket. Uh, on the corner of uh, Doheny and Beverly that I'd go to to pick up chicks at 1.45 in the morning because they sold booze there. And it was a real wild west in that parking lot. Hi, it's can like, you give me some alcohol? It's like it's talking a, to this. We're going to call this episode White Skeevy. White, White Skeevy is right. I used to live by the Rock and Roll Ralphs when I first Wait, moved was to that LA. his name? Adam, that's his name? Skeevy? Uh, Jimmy Martinez's buddy? No, uh... Smoothie. 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 White <laughs> smoothie. Well, I always had a fake name. I never used my real name. I was either, uh, I still remember the names. I was either uh, Michael Fitzpatrick, Patrick Fitzmichael, or, <laughs> or uh, what was the other name? Tommy Salami. <laughs> Great alias aliases. Wait, so you would just hang out at the Ralphs or you would buy the booze for them? Uh, sometimes I did a little of this, a little of that. I mean, uh, how so bad you would you would just hang out and then wait for them to approach you? Well, yeah. Well, we'd go out, we'd go to dinner and maybe a nightclub or whatever, and then we knew at one forty-five people are desperate to buy booze, keep the party going. So we would just like loiter in the parking lot of Ralph's, and then oh, where are you guys from? We're from Montana. <laughs> Oh, you must have got a lot of action back then. I mean, it was just a different era. It's hard to explain to the young, the, the Gen Zers, man. But uh, let's just say the daddy, man, got a lot of nighttime exercise. <laughs> and I don't just, mean wow. bench press. The daddy, man. Let's just say the Me Too movement was not a thing. <laughs> let's just say back then it was Me Too. <laughs> Plus, uh, no, I mean... People need alcohol, and if you're 21, you're going to – I mean, that's perfect. There was also the 7-Eleven on Olympic and La Cienega for the real desperados. No, but you're 21. <laughs> they're, they're probably 18, so they're legal for sex, but they don't have alcohol, so you provide the alcohol and the mm. sex, so it's perfect. Yeah. I've never slept with an underage woman, never even come close. So uh, everything was legal and, as they say in the business, copacetic. Johnny Salami. No, Tommy I Salami. I remember one time I was at the oh, Irvine sorry. Improv. Yeah, definitely correct me. Yeah, Tommy Salami. <laughs> <laughs> and now Peter fits perfect, just in case I forgot um, one of the other four names. <laughs> Peter fits perfect. <laughs> Peter fits perfect? Yeah. That's great. That should be Fitzsimmons. That should be Fitzsimmons' stage name. Well, the sad thing is, I'm not kidding. <laughs> All right, well, hilarious. I, I want to. I don't know. I I don't know how I feel now. So, what's the word on the street about uh about Kate Quigley and and what are you what are your sources telling you? I mean, uh, I got a report uh, the night it happened that she was not doing well, but now uh, I hear she's out of ICU and she'll recover. You know, just, you know, obviously, uh, pretty fucked up. I mean, she's a small girl, so you know, it wouldn't have to take much to like harm her. Uh, Fu was he wasn't the biggest guy, but like he was like uh, 
may, maybe a little shorter than me. Uh, yeah, I saw pictures with her and him, and they, he seems pretty tall, average height. Or yeah, he's like he was average looking dude. I mean, uh, body and weight. And uh, I, I didn't know the other guy. So uh, obviously, the the cocaine was racist because it killed the black guy and not the white woman. Definitely <laughs> racist. Racist cocaine. So uh, what else are you hearing out there, Earl, since you're the West Coast correspondent? Speaking of that, what's Florentine saying? Does he have any East Coast gossip? No, I mean, he knows just as much as anybody. I know Joey Diaz was close with her, and, uh, I mean, he knows, you know, he sent her a text and no response. So, yeah, I think everyone's just like, I don't know what the hell's going on. You think she'll do my podcast? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll let you handle this one, Earl. Uh, I would guess no, but like, I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, might be sweet, sweet, you know, might be, uh, you know, you got ping dang. I mean, uh, I loved him in Enter the Dragon. Hello. Winnie the little uh, guy in Enter the Dragon. Maybe she'll, yeah, maybe she'll, uh, I would like to ask her if she saw like the, the light at the end of the tunnel kind of a thing. How near death was she? Because if they all yeah, died, it's like, if they all died, she must have been pretty close to death. The cops said they walked in. I didn't talk to them, but the reports say basically they walked in, everybody was dead. Uh, yeah, I mean, from what I saw, this was on TMZ, like they were already dead and she was barely hanging on, but she's in really good shape. So that might have saved her, like in terms of, you know, if she yeah, was. I don't think it's that. I think it's like, like you said, body size is probably just all, just also how much. She probably took less. She must have took less. Yeah, she must have took less cocaine. But I mean, others. she's in great physical shape. So even if she did the same as the others, like. Yeah, but she's not in better physical shape than the black dude. Black dudes are always in better physical shape than everybody. You ever see a homeless black dude? Looks like yeah. he's a fucking trainer at the gym. Well, I know. I, I used to work with this guy. Uh, his name was Black Lenny. A guy never worked out. He had the greatest body I've ever seen on a man. Like, just. And like a 12 inch hog, too. So that, that guy was a maniac. <laughs> it's like you watch a guy at West 4th Street basketball courts in New York. He'll, he'll be wearing like uh, uh, jeans and work boots and then he can dunk it. And you're like, what the? F-? It's just, it's, it's, it's so, yeah. So I'm sure Fu was in way better shape than Kate Quigley. And uh, so I, I just think. Not maybe now. Maybe yeah, but maybe it's uh, I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's uh, I don't think if you're if you work out a lot, you can resist the uh, cocaine killing you. But I th- see, I think you can. Like, I think if you're in better shape, like you know, if Ralph. Yeah, but how about Artie Lang? Artie Lang just blows your theory out the fucking window because he's in terrible shape and he survived everything. Well, he's an anomaly, like Keith Richards. You know, there are. Uh, you know, people. You know, there are exceptions to the rule. I get it, but it's like I, we'll have to for the next episode. We'll have to get Doctor Steve on. Yeah, talk, talk about cocaine and who it, get- kill, who it kills first. Is it racist? And does it kill people that are in bad shape as opposed to in good physical shape? I mean, uh, maybe Ralphie Mae's hot dogs were laced with fentanyl. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, we got to get her on. We got to get her on. I, I now I gotta. I feel like I gotta make amends somehow. Do you feel bad now? With I that don't tweet? feel bad, but it would be funny if she came on the show. But I mean, I think she would even get it. Like you know, when there's tragedy in the comedy world, I'm sure if I died tomorrow, someone would make a joke about me, uh, or you know, if I got into a bad car accident, like you know, it's just it's what comics do. It's, I mean, I remember when Richard uh, Richard Jenny died. Chris Rock supposedly was on Letterman saying, making jokes about Richard Jenny dying, and then he was like, "Well, Richard would have wanted it this way." I mean, I don't know if that's the case, but it's like you know, if you. But the thing is, uh, I had a thing with Kate quickly. This wasn't out of left field. Yeah, yeah, well, he did. No, I mean, like when Ralphie May, uh, a couple months before he died, he said, "Earl, when I die, I think he knew." He's like, Earl, when I die, don't cry. Make fun of me. Like, that's what he wanted. So I've made fun of him for the last five years. Hello. <laughs> well, when Patrice died, David Tell had that great joke on Opie and Anthony. He's like, come on, we got a big purple suit we need to buy. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody was being sad. Yeah, so he, uh, he broke the room open. Even your boy Jeff Ross at uh, Brody's Memorial had that great joke about, I mean, he I broke the room. That. That was yeah. A- you- I, you know, I hate to give him 
credit. But what do you say? Was, what do you say? Well, it was at the comedy store and all they had all of Brody's like family, his oh, friends, yeah. his baseball coach. And then, you know, there was no comics. So Jeff Ross gets on stage. He goes, you know, after hearing all the stories from Brody's friends and family, now I know why he killed himself. <laughs> so it was funny in the moment. Broke the no, I know. No, I've seen Jeff Ross be funny a couple of times. He did have I a think I turned over a new leaf. I think I turned over a new leaf. I'm giving a little my I'm getting a little uh props, some props to Jeff Ross. So maybe maybe I'm turning, maybe something happened to me over the weekend. No, I mean you, you I gotta hug your it's... kids, you gotta hug your kids. You never know. You don't, you know, like we could end this Zoom call and I could get uh hit uh, walking my dogs, uh, you know. Let's just don't walk, don't walk in the street. Stay on the sidewalk. Uh, well, yeah, there's that, but like you know, West Hollywood, you know the uh, the cars are out of control around here. You know, and the gays. Yeah, and don't bend over to pick up any dog shit because somebody might fucking shove something up your fucking. Yeah, they might go Stevie Nicks on your asshole. Yeah, they might blow something up your asshole. Well, that's when I walk my dogs, and I, if I drop my keys, I kick the keys up two blocks before I pick them up. Hello! <laughs> I, saw I, love, I, I love West Hollywood. I, I, I love, that's a fucking great neighborhood. It's so funny that all the comedy clubs are there, and it's gay neighborhood, but it's a fucking great neighborhood. Oh, I love it. I mean, it's getting to me. Like, the other day, I'm walking. The, I walk my dogs really late at night, three or four in the morning sometimes, and uh, I cut through the alley, and I see the guy who... I buy my pizza from him, like a three guy gang bang right outside the in the alley. Yeah, it's like, and he's like, "Hey, Earl," I'm like, "Dude, you touch my pizza, bro!" Like, (laughs) wait, they were having a gang bang in the alley. It was like a three person, you know, like they were all boning and sucking and whatever. And in the alley, yeah. Why don't they just go inside? Uh, Probably health code uh, regulations. All right, you got me there. That would take them from an A to an A. Right, they didn't want to lose their rating, probably. <laughs> so it is good pizza, though. That's yeah, good for LA because I, I yet to find good pizza in LA. So next time I'm there, I'll I'll check it out. Well, it's not like New York pizza, but it's it's uh, you know, a John and Vinny's is probably the best pizza. Yeah. And that's why you sign up to Kevin's Patreon to get the best pizza places in LA. Yeah, off to off Doheny. All <laughs> right, let's wrap it up. I gotta I get it. Sorry, Earl. I did, what you were gonna say? I was gonna say I I can also give a good Yelp review on the uh, studs uh, porno theater. I went in there a couple times just to flesh it out. It's still they have a <laughs> porno theater still active. Oh, it's unbelievable. Like it's uh it, it, they must have a deal with the cops. Uh where is it? Santa Monica Boulevard? Santa Monica and Gardner and uh all the listening they'd be like Brennan's been there how does he know what street it's on <laughs> <laughs> I just know Santa Monica is the main artery yeah it's uh open through from, West Hollywood uh, 12 to 3 daily uh 12 to 5 on weekends and what do you uh, mean 12 to 12 noon to 5 in the morning 12 to 3 in the morning on uh Monday through uh Friday and then the weekends it's 12 to 5 and I went in there once That's, so you're talking about 19 hours a day Oh, it's so nasty in there. And then, so I, I looked it up on Yelp, going, no one leaves a Yelp review for this place. That would mean <laughs> you went there. And it's like 40 Yelp reviews, all complaining about the smell of the place. And I'm like, you're out of control. Oh like, God. guys are dumping loads in there. Of course it's going to smell. <laughs> I've never been there, but I've been to Dan Tanis. Oh, oh yeah. That's legendary, <laughs> right over on... Uh... What road's that? Sunset, That's, right? Uh, Santa Monica oh. and Doheny, right by the Troubadour. Yeah. No, every time that every time there's a documentary about like the Eagles, or I, I watch one about what's the guy's name? Um, what the fuck? The guy from DreamWorks. What's the guy's name? Um, well, Irving Azoff was their manager, but no, uh, no. What's the guy? What's the guy? He was he was a uh, guy. David Geffen. David. Oh, Geffen. Yeah. I watch a, it. Was a really good documentary about David Geffen, but. But, uh, you know, every 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 time of that era, it was like, then I, we went to Dantana's and I went to, I'm like, that place is still fucking there. Oh, yeah. It looks the same. They haven't changed it. Like, if you walked in there tonight, it would look like it was 1982. Right? Yeah, it's great. I'm sure people love that about it. Yeah, we walked by last night with the dogs. It was packed because right now they're doing outdoor dining, I think. Uh, and you couldn't fit another person back there. Wow. So. 
Good for them. I was just Googling Pee Wee Herman because you know how he got caught cranking it in a movie theater? Yeah. yeah. It, the movie theater was in South, uh, right over here in Sarasota, Florida. He did. He got really? caught. South Trail Cinema. It's still open? Uh, it says it's closed and so demolished. Earl, Earl ne nobody ever got in trouble there because uh, didn't the guy from um, Spinal Tap was uh, Fred Willard? Didn't Fred he Willard. Open? No, he got busted at the Tiki Theater, which is on Santa Monica Boulevard, but that's in like the the tranny area, Santa Monica and Western. By the way, they have great matinees there. What the <laughs> but, he's, but he's not he he was not gay or anything. He just was there. Well, that's, I mean, that's that's a, a, is that a straight theater? Or it's mixed. Well, I, I think uh, whatever you're into is at the Tiki Theater. I hate, I love when people, when women especially, like, oh, that guy is, like, li, li, listen, women, if you had a dick, you'd be doing weird stuff, too. <laughs> well, the funniest thing is when I walked into the Studs Theater, the guy's like, will this be, uh, it's $25, and he's like, will this be uh, cash or charge? I'm like, I'm giving you cash, man. This ain't going to be on my credit card statement. <laughs> it's kind of like. Well, then he was like, what room do you want to go to? I'm like, well, how about, let's start off in the straight room. And he's like, oh, nobody goes up there. And I'm like, well, I'm going up there. So he's like, all right, it's upstairs to the left. So I go upstairs. It's just, I swear to God, this happened. It's not even a, a projector screen. It's a, a TV with rabbit ears. And it was <laughs> playing an old episode of Miami Vice I'd never seen before. No, so I, come on. I swear, I on my parents' graves, I swear I stayed and watched it. It was season five, free fall, part one of part two. And then... Uh, I said, yeah, you're right. Uh, what room do you recommend? He's like, well, you should go in the tranny porn room. And I've been in a lot of weird scenes in my life. <laughs> I, like This one I, takes I, the cake. I, the first thing I see is an old guy jacking off. His pants are not around his ankles. They're in the corner of the room. And he's just beating it. Two rows behind him, full anal going on. And then the whole back of the theater is lined with, I don't know, 15 dudes all jacking off. It, it was unbelievable. Well, why were you there? I just was curious. I'm like, there's no <laughs> way. So I took this girl who was an aerobics teacher I was hanging with. and uh, On a she, date? You took her there on a date? I'm not necessarily a date, but I'm like, hey, you want to go just for some laughs, but I can't go in there alone or with a dude. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I mean... The, because there was one other time I thought about going there. I had a good set at the comedy store. And long story short, I, I said to five comics who were just hanging, hey, let's go to the Studs Theater on me. Let's just have some laughs. So I go up there and the guy's like, how many people? I'm like, well, it's a long hallway. There's only four people behind me, five. And he's like, okay, that'll be $132. I'm like, what the fuck? What is this, the IMAX? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can we work a deal? And uh, Does this come with uh, popcorn and soda? Stay away from the popcorn. There's a couple of complaints on their Yelp that they don't show uh, adult movies anymore. It's twenty three dollars to get in, and they said uh, they were showing Jumanji. Well, no, well, you got to be careful because they, they show porno uh, there, but they're you know like the porn parody titles. So it, it like I don't know what the parody for Jumanji would be, but like. They had, when I was there that night, instead of that Richard Dreyfus movie, Mr. Holland's Opus, it was Mr. Holland's Anus. Hmm. So, uh, and, uh, so how is this legal? Guys are just uh, having anal sex. I think they have a deal with the cops because, but here's the funny thing. So we go into the big room. Like there's all these little, it's like a cineplex basically. There's probably five or six rooms, but the big room is you could do a stand-up special there if you could stomach the smell of the bleach like it was like <laughs> no because the the big room is like this beautiful probably could fit two to three hundred people it's got a walkway in the middle they must do like i don't know drag shows or something there uh, i'm gonna uh try and get back in comedy central's good graces and maybe do a jeff ross presents earl at the studs theater <laughs> i gotta look wow. this up maybe do a roast battle it's called the studs theater Studs Theater oh. used to be the Pussycat Theater in the 70s, which is where they had legit porno premieres of like uh, John Holmes movies and the Harry Reams and uh, Jamie Gillis, Peter Forecourt North, you know, the, the heavy hitters. Joey Silvera, you know. 
Jeff Stryker, the gay guy. He was he was like the De Niro of gay porn. He was straight, but he did gay porn. And Stryker's Island, is, uh, Spielberg's got nothing on that movie. Stryker, Stryker, Stryker. All right, so I'm doing a 9-11 uh, 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 show with uh, Bob Levy. I think it's Dojo East, but I, I I don't know what the name of the club is. I think it's Tripley's Room, the dojo. But no, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not L.A. anymore, right? That place is now a homeless depot. Uh, the dojo is now in Austin, Texas, under the Vulcan Mining Company banner. Yeah. I'm doing a show, and I, I'm promoting this heavily. If you live anywhere in the Tampa area, I'm headlining Side Splitters Sunday, September 19th. I want to pack it out. I'm running my old hour, and I'm going to film some stuff. So I hope you can make it out. Tampa Side Splitters, September 19th, headliner. Chad Zumach and Bobby Kelly's there this weekend. Yeah, go see Bobby. He'll be talking about his anus or something like that, or eating. <laughs> yeah, it's called the jo- the Dojo of Comedy, Kevin. Uh, Morris Plains, New Jersey. What's the zip? Morris Plains, ain't that where Chrissy Mary lives? Doesn't give me the the zip, but it's two thirty one Speedwell Ave, Morris Plains, okay. New Jersey. Is there a website? Uh, Tiff. T I F F S comedy.com. Tiff's comedy.com. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. You know, I was watching a documentary about 9 11. 9 11 is fucked up, man. It's, it, it was. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you watch the one on Netflix? Yeah, I'm watching that now. It's fucking, it's amazing. Not only is it amazing, it's fucking applicable now for two reasons. Because they're talking about Afghanistan. Afghanistan has always been a shithole. And uh, and the government has to fucking know better about places they get into. Uh, you can only do so much with Flint, Michigan, or Detroit, or Afghanistan. So it's like you can we like we're gonna go in there. We're gonna we're gonna change their culture. We're gonna no, you're not. All right, it's a shithole. Anyway, uh, but the whole what the nine eleven thing was like it's fucking unbelievable. Watching that shit come down and it's fucking crazy. Anyway, it really is crazy. So I'm watching that. 9-11, obviously, the 20th anniversary is coming up. Uh, I wasn't there. Uh, actually, I used to wake up late back then, so I woke up and I turned on the, the uh, CNBC because I used to be in a stock market or something. I don't know. Turn Jim Kramer, bye, bye, bye. I turn, on, I turn on CNBC and I see, I'm like, I thought it was like a, you know, obviously I thought it was like a movie or something. I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's Michael and, Bay producing this? Because it already had happened. So I was like, what? Starring the? Steve Renazizi. I was Whoa. like, what the <laughs> fuck? So anyway, this thing on Netflix is pretty long. Yeah, it's it, like this far. Can I tell it, you, like, I know we got to get going, but can I, my, my sister called me on 9-11, like in the morning, and she's like, you got to turn on the TV, turn on the TV, any channel, the world's blowing up. And I thought she just had a bad batch of booger sugar. I'm like, Caroline, let me let me call Fast Daddy. I'll, I'll get you straight. And, <laughs> So I turned on the TV and what I neglected to remember was on September 10th, 2001, I fell asleep watching uh, channel 598, which on direct TV is the only channel that shows full penetration. So I was like, man, this world looks great. What the fuck? <laughs> but now I'm doing bits just to get in a few laughs at the end of the pod. If you got it, uh, um, yeah, I think Louis CK was telling me a story because he was a, uh, he actually flew the day before he was, I think he was supposed to fly the day of 9-11 or I think he flew the next day. No, he flew the day early, something about, cause his birthday is like on the 12th or the 13th. So they had a party for him. And uh, so he was supposed to I think flown 9-11 but he flew a day early or something like that. But anyway, he was in LA and uh, his wife, his then wife called him crying. And he's like, what did I do now? <laughs> and then he's like she's like what he goes what happened she goes turn on the tv so he you know because if you're on the west coast it was like six yeah seven, it was like, six seven o'clock in the morning so so then he woke up and he was like holy fucking shit anyway so i was in college at kent state and i i i, I would wake up listening to stern and stern was talking about it. i thought he was doing a bad comedy bit i go what the fuck is i don't new york what's going on and turns out it happened well, here's the crazy thing. The week after 9-11, uh, 
when I heard the terrorists trained on Microsoft Flight Simulator, I went to Comp USA and bought me a copy. And I said, I want to see how hard it is to fly a plane into a building. Because that's what they trained on was this game. And uh, I couldn't even get the little, they started you off with a small Cessna plane and I couldn't even get it off the runway. So props to those guys. What the fuck? <laughs> they said that a couple of the guys were just muscle. Like there was, a, there was like four pilots and then the rest of the guys were just hired muscle. But Partly was because the guys couldn't speak English, so they would go to flight school, and they they couldn't they you know they couldn't really tell them what to do because they they spoke whatever fucking uh, uh, Arab Arab language they spoke. I don't know how many there are, but anyway, it was just the whole thing's so bizarre. Like it's it's just watching them fucking fly the planes to the building, and then just oh man, it's fucking trippy. Anyway, don't I wouldn't don't do cocaine and then watch it because it'll be too much. So, so don't take fentanyl either, stupid. I know people be like, he didn't say, he said, don't do cocaine. He didn't say anything about don't do fentanyl. Don't do fentanyl. Don't do cocaine and don't do heroin. And don't fly and, a plane into a building. Yeah. But before you watch his 9-11 thing on Netflix, don't do not do any of these heavy drugs because it's real trippy being uh, just watching it regular sober. Yeah. I mean, I do. I watch everything sober. So it's like, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a sad documentary because it is long. It's like five episodes. So I do do a palate cleanser and watch, uh, you know, Comedy Central uh, show just to get me going. Yeah. So you watch anal penetration to. Oh, I'm telling you what. Well, the tranny porn room had a the first like. Earl, you're days. telling us you're giving us too much information. We're starting to think that maybe you have a little bit of a thing aside 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 uh, thing going. I'm just saying when you've seen a 4K porn on a 150 inch screen. It, you know, when the when the guy pulls his dick out the first time, it's like that opening shot in Star Wars where the, the Star Destroyer's coming in and you're like, Jesus Christ, where are this guy's balls coming into the shot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like that aspect of porn where you got to watch other guys dick. And when they, when they have the, the back shot, you're watching the guy, the guy's yeah. asshole. And he's like, I don't like that. I don't like that shot. Well, it's I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, anti-gay or anti like, man's balls or anything but it's just that's like my least favorite angle. that is the worst shot is yeah. you just hit you just see the nuts yeah slap yeah. in the back of the <laughs> earl where oh, were horrible. you where were you on may 2nd 1997 on santa monica boulevard at 4 45 a.m were you in eddie murphy's car with the trans no, I, I think i was headlining uh an open mic in the ballet and it was running long <laughs> that was may 2nd he did that yeah that was my birthday so I, on santa monica west hollywood yeah he's well, yeah. he's he's into trannies that's a fact he's into trannies i know that from well, very, them, i know that from very reliable very reliable sources some of them look good though like uh, who cares they still got a dick earl earl you're yeah. you're making it you're you're giving us way too much information people are going to start talking i know jim stancil will those guys are real homophobic. All those guys, Aunt Mead, all those guys, <laughs> eyeing the sky, they're very homophobic. They're going to have a lot of questions for Earl Skakel. Hey, listen, pussy's been a gateway drug to dick for me. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I, listen, I, I don't care what anybody says. I think if pussy gets too easy, you get bored. Eddie Murphy could have had any woman he wanted, and then you just get bored. It's like, come on. I've never let's gotten make, bored. Let's make, yeah, you're not Eddie Murphy. You're not even close. Eddie Murphy got more pussy in like a month in its heyday than you have in your whole life, Chad. That's the meanest thing you've ever said to me. What I say? Well, it's like I'm not Eddie Murphy. Oh. <laughs> it's Charlie Murphy. Hello. All right, you guys, let's go. I gotta get my. I gotta take my son to the barber. A comedy okay. hobo. Call it comedy hobo. Hey guys, you're gonna want to uh, sign up to the football Patreon this season. We're gonna have some fun. Some big money is gonna be, be floating around. You can be a part of it. Email yeah, Kevin Brennan. I forgot to add in if you if you uh, if you jump in the the football pool. And again, we're not, we're doing this for fun. Like we, I don't expect to win. I didn't do that good last year, so it's not it's not a scam. It'll be fun. Plus, if you if you jump in, you can be a guest on the show if you'd like to be. Like Jim Stansel already said, he's gonna do it, but he's not. He doesn't need to be a guest. So. You want to be a guest? You don't have to be a guest. Lenny's print will probably be a guest and guys like that, but you can or you don't. You you don't have to be a guest. So, but it'll be fun. It'd be fun like to really do it and and have some money at stake. Last last year we're just fucking around, but this year there'll be some real money at stake. Yeah, man, making some big. All right, bucks. Earl, great job. We love you, Earl, and uh, and keep and keep your ears. 
you you're like our TMZ out there, so you got to stay on the on the on the stories. Keep your ear to the ground. Keep keep your ear to the ground. I got my finger in the air. Yeah, I know where, I know where the wind's blowing. Literally, literally, when you're what, taking your dog out for a walk at three in the morning, put your ear to the ground at Doheny and see if you're hearing any fucking gossip. Yeah, no stone goes unturned with Earl in West Hollywood. I follow the stink. <laughs> God bless. Count the vote. <laughs>